Welcome back to part three of our HT wheel video series. In the previous installments, we gave an overview of the traditional wheel strategy and introduced the three main points that differentiate our HT wheel strategy from a traditional wheel strategy. Those again were manual assignment, position sizing, and covered strangles. So far, we've covered manual assignment and position sizing as we've run through the example of a real trade we made with ticker SPCE. Up to this point in the example we're following along with, we sold cash secured puts, utilized our manual assignment strategy to acquire shares early, and we discussed position sizing and why it's relevant for our covered strangle approach, but we haven't quite dug into why we want to utilize a covered strangle. So let's address that as we jump back into our real-life example that we're using throughout these videos as we learn how to successfully manage and exit a trade in the HT wheel strategy. This is the Hourglass Trader, where as time passes, we make money. So to begin our discussion about covered strangles, let's first talk about ways to manage a losing trade. So we know when we sell cash secured puts at the top of the HT wheel, if nothing goes wrong, then we're going to collect max profit, we're going to start over. The only reason we ever get to step two when we start to sell these covered strangles is because something's gone wrong. So it does mean that we're going to be managing a losing trade, so that's why we're going to look at this. So we've got three options here. You could do nothing, you could average down, and then our third option here is the covered strangle, which we're going to talk about in a little more detail. So let's look at what would happen if you do nothing. We remember from our example that ticker SPCE started at $18.40 and dropped down to $16.92. We sold these 18 strike puts for a $0.54 cent premium. So let's do our basic calculation about what our basis would be if we did absolutely nothing. So we remember that for 100 shares for the put that we sold, we're assigned at an 18 strike, meaning we pay $18 times 100 shares. That's net of the premium of 54 that we paid. So 54 goes right there. And we know that the price that we paid, the 18 net of that premium, gives us 1746 divided by the 100 shares that we received gives us a 1746 basis in the stock. And since the stock's currently trading at $16.92, we're sitting on a loss right now of $16.92 minus $17.46, which is about $0.54 cents a share. And remembering that we have 100 total shares gives us a $54 loss off the bat. Obviously not terrible, it would have been way worse if we had bought the shares at 1840 when it first started than 1746, but again, that's why we start the strategy the way that we do with these cash secured puts. So let's go to the next method of managing a losing trade, which is averaging down. This introduces a little more risk, but as you'll see, drives this basis down a little bit further. So again, we start with the shares, which are going to be $18 times 100 shares for 1800 Net of that premium of 54 means that we paid a net price of 1746 We remember that it's for 100 shares, so our basis off the bat is 1746 But since we see that space is trading below our basis, what we're going to do is we're going to add more shares at 1692 So 1692 is the market price times 100 more shares is $1,692 meaning that all in all we've paid $16.92 plus $17.46 up here for $34.38, but we have 200 shares now. So our basis is going to be that $34.38 divided by 200, giving us a basis of $17.19. So the name of the game when you have a losing trade is to get that basis as low as possible, which is why we think doing nothing is the worst and averaging down is a little bit better because it gets your basis down to $17.19. But you got to remember that it does introduce a little bit of risk. So right now here, you're still sitting on a loss of $16.92 minus $17.19. That loss is going to be $0.27 cents a share. But you got to remember it's multiplied by the new shares that you have. So it's going to be the same from this price. But the risk comes if the stock goes a little bit lower from here. So if space went down to $15, we have lost a lot more money because we have more money in the shares. While the loss per share is a little bit lower, the fact that we're multiplying it by 200 rather than 100 illustrates the fact that Averaging down and putting a little more capital in the position makes it a little bit riskier. But the upside, however, is if something happens and it rebounds and goes up to 20, you've made a lot more money on the upswing. But I think in the long run, which is why we talk about position sizing, only starting off with 50% of what you're comfortable investing allows you to kind of average down and put this additional capital behind the play so that you can get that basis as low as possible to protect yourself from downswings and still catch a little bit more profit if it does have an upswing like this. But let's get back to the situation at hand where space is at 1692. We know doing nothing is probably the worst option. Averaging down is slightly better, but let's take a look at a covered strangle, which is what we know is selling a call and a put at the same time. So theoretically for this example, we're gonna sell a 17 strike put for 75 cents of premium. So off the bat, we're still gonna get shares, 100 of them at $18. That's still gonna be none of that $54 premium. Our net price paid is gonna be 1800 minus 54. And once again, 
divided by 100 shares. That gives us that initial basis. So let's take a look at what happens when we sell this 17 strike put and what happens if we're assigned on it. So as far as the shares are concerned, we know that it's gonna be a 17 strike times 100 shares. So we pay $1,700 for the new shares. And that's gonna be net of the $75 premium that we paid up here. So that's gonna be 75. So we know our net price paid for that new set of shares is gonna be 1,700 minus $75 for 1625. And we know that's for 100 new shares. So our secondary basis is gonna be 1625 divided by that 100 for 1625 and for our new basis since we had 100 shares up front and 100 shares on the back end from that new put that we sold is really just going to be the average of that first basis and that second basis we have right here to give us a 1685 basis so from this position our gain or loss per share we're actually going to be at a gain at this point if we're assigned on this so it's not a huge gain but it's a seven cent gain per share we know that's going to be times the 200 shares that we're now holding with this position since we were assigned for a $13 gain, which this is going to take another week to get assigned. So right off the bat, you're not going to have that gain. But from a perspective of lowering that basis, we use the strategy because it is the single most effective strategy at pushing that basis downward and rescuing a losing play. That is the name of the game. We want to get our basis as low as possible and the coverage triangle accomplishes that. And this is really kind of a conservative estimate really of what that basis would be because we know that selling the puts is only one half of it. This basis is gonna be further lowered by the calls that we sell. So whatever premium you get on that, you could take right off this basis right here. So if you got 50 cents of call premium off that, you know that that's not gonna be 1746, it's gonna be 1696, and your basis is even lower at 1660, which in just two short weeks of having this trade going, when you started this trade at 1840 and it's down to 1692, the fact that you're still 30 cents in the profit on this one, is really a phenomenal result and really highlights uh, the biggest reasons that we run the strategy we do using options to help manage our long positions. But that again is only if the stock stays below 17. Let's say the stock shoots all the way back up to 17.5 or something like that. We know in that situation that our 17 puts wouldn't be assigned, so all this premium, the $75, we just get to keep. So we are only gonna have 100 shares, but our price paid for the shares is the initial 1800 minus that 54 premium from the first set of puts, minus that 75 premium from the second round of puts. And just going along with the example that we had, let's say there was a $50 premium on the second set of calls. So that puts us at 1621 net price paid. We do only have 100 shares, but that is an incredible basis at 1621 being reduced by both the put that we sold here and the covered calls theoretically for 50 cents. At this point in time, our gain on the share is gonna be 17.5 minus 16.21. We are only gonna have 100 shares again, but a $129 profit off a situation where on these first two examples of doing nothing and averaging down, we only have profits of four and $62 respectively. This is a great way to manage the play and gets you a little more capital and lets you take advantage of the premium and those options to help manage that play. So let's take a look at what could happen from here. So things could go way up, they could go way down. Let's see what happens if they go to 15. Now we're gonna have a pretty big loss here on the averaging down, which is why I'm a little bit partial to the coverage strangle as opposed to averaging down. We saw that when things go up to 18, averaging down is superior to doing nothing. But at the same time, that coverage strangle, if assigned and if not assigned, give us superior returns. It's not until we start seeing a really severe increase in the stock that the averaging down beats out the non-assigned strangle but even at that point, the non-assigned strangle beats out doing nothing and waiting. But again, the most important thing to consider is what happens when things go badly. If you're kind of splitting hairs about which strategy is more profitable, well, that just means you've made a profit and that's probably the best possible problem we could have when investing. The thing that's way more important of a consideration is what happens when things continue downwards and the protection that these coverage strangles offer are far superior to the averaging down method. And that's why these covered strangles are really an important part of this HT wheel strategy. And it's something that's really lacking from the traditional wheel strategy. So we try our best to emphasize that to all of the people who follow along with us as we run plays like this. So that's a solid overview of why we incorporate the covered strangle as one of the main differentiators between our strategy and a traditional wheel strategy. The biggest takeaway we can offer is that lowering our basis is the name of the game. While sometimes it can be annoying to limit potential gains, protecting ourselves from bigger losses is far more important. Being upset that you could have made more money is one of the best problems you could possibly have because it means you're making profitable trades, which will compound over time to give great monthly and yearly returns. For now though, that's all we have. 
Stay tuned for the fourth and final part of our HT wheel series, where we'll use the concepts we've discussed in here to finish out our trade for a profit, despite a steep overall drop in the value of the stock that we're playing. In the meantime, it'd really help us out if you could take a second to subscribe to our channel so you could stay up to date with our videos as we post them. Also, feel free to join us in our free Discord server, where we discuss our trades live as we make them. Until next time, this has been the Hourglass Trader, where as time passes, we make money.